okay so i talked about uh, previously i discussed about the atmospheric windows okay to the analysis of uh, atmospheric transmissions versus wavelength curves okay so by uh, uh, on the basis of available atmospheric windows at the sensor level at the satellite uh, at the sensor level we select the spectral band where design we design the sensors okay. so finally there are some concluding remarks based on the discussion we had previously like one cannot select the sensor to be used in any given uh, sensing task remote sensing task arbitrarily okay so one one must instead consider while designing the sensor the first consideration is spectral sensitivity of sensors available okay the sensor which we select over here okay, to sense let's say ground resolution element energy coming out from the element that is falling in the sensor field of view if i say over here okay so what is the spectral sensitivity of the spectral range spectral range means that is wavelength range let's say lambda 1 to lambda 2 So in the given spectral range, okay, what is the spectral sensitivity of the sensor? First case, first requirement, first consideration that you need to keep in mind while designing these sensors. The second one is presence or absence of atmospheric windows in the spectral range in which one wishes to sense. So. Uh, we have the availability of uh, energy in the uh, range of wavelength okay. so there you need to know that first you, you you need to know that what are the atmospheric windows okay now the third uh, consideration that you need to keep in mind the source magnitude the energy the what is the energy source like this case sun energy energy source okay. and the magnitude and spectral composition of energy available in this range when we talk about this atmospheric windows okay so in this spectral range what is the magnitude and spectral composition composition of energy available okay. like when we consider the sun then in this way energy radiate then due to the atmospheric transmission that is t versus wavelength you have a plot like this i have just drawn the rough sketch over here so you need to multiply them okay so at all wavelength this energy will be multiplied by the t t is a function of lambda over here t changes it's a transmission and the range is between 1 to 0 so by multiplying at that specific band wave what is the energy radiated from sun into what is the atmospheric transmission available okay now that will be the actual energy that is interacting to the our surface object in one path length okay so this is energy available at the earth surface fine then further it is reflected back we'll see the analysis what do we mean by reflection over here okay and what are the different uh, parameters which govern the amount of energy reflected back correct and again again it is reflected or radiated back to the sensor so again there will be multiplication of atmospheric transmission m so ultimately the energy reaches to the sensor is very less compared to the energy transmitted by the sun at that particular wavelength okay and where we can see the losses we can see the losses in the atmosphere we can see the losses while interacting to the surface object and we can 
see the losses while the re uh, while the uh, reflected energy when it passed through again this atmosphere and finally reaches to the sensor okay so these are the three consideration that you need to keep in mind while designing the sensor okay now i am going to discuss this part right now like how we analyze the interaction of emr radiation with earth surface object now the previous query that I, that i asked to you like if uh, in a water absorption band can we select our uh, uh, when we talk about water absorption band so in these spectral bands which is called as water absorption band can we design our sensor it is no <laughs> why why we we do not select the water absorption band to design our sensor because it's water absorption band it states that absorption is significant in these bands okay so if the energy is trapped in the atmosphere itself it means you can't expect the significant energy reaches to the sensor over here okay and further if i will ask do you know any specific water absorption bands who will tell me if you have gone through the chapter 1 that i suggested you to kindly go through that then i hope you can So one one point four five micrometer and one point nine and two point six also. What they are? Just tell me. I'm writing what you. One point four five micrometer and one point nine. Yes, one point nine, and two point two point six or two point six is it? Uh, yes, sir. Two two point five, sir. Why I'm asking? You need to remember these bands, okay? So the values which uh, you told me, the just same values uh, I have written over here. Okay. So there are certain water absorption bands. I think these bands are these uh, wavelength are the valley in the what transmission versus wavelength curve. You can notice certain sharp valleys over there. While I was talking about that. Okay. So at these locations, there are the sharp valleys. where yeah, suddenly you can expect this m is nearly equal to 0 very low start exactly zero it's very low value okay so obviously you are not going to select your spectral band you are not going to design your band in this around these wavelength okay? because they are totally trapped energy is totally absorbed in the atmosphere because see, there might be query like uh, 1.45 micrometer is given and you need to ask uh, okay at this 1.45 micrometer plus minus let's say 0.2 micrometer that that is a 0.4 micrometer will be the band width and 1.4 micrometer is a central frequency central wavelength so in this spectral band can we design our sensor Yes or no? Whatever response you have, you need to explain that. 
No, sir. For Earth of the reason, we cannot design in this range. No, see, this I am suggesting what kind of questions could be uh, could be designed. So you can't take, uh, don't, don't expect a straightforward question like what is a scattering and what is a job set. So these are the uh, general general topic, general phenomenon. Okay. So uh, because see, in this course we try to understand uh, and see our objective is to learn. In a way, like if you you are going to uh, let's say if you are if, if you are going to be a part of design engineer, uh, if you are going to a part going to be a part of like uh, remote sensing analyst to process the images. So at least you should have some some logical understanding. Yes. Yes. Like if we are not selecting this spectral band in a certain range. Okay, if you are not designing the sensor in a certain range, then why it is so? Okay. So that understanding should be very clear. So that's why I suggested you to you need to learn the numbers like wavelength. Okay, it's a 0 0.4 to 0 0.7, it's a visible spectrum, then a one millimeter to one meter wavelength, it's a microwave and radar uh, imaging we do there. So the nomenclature you need to remember, naming for a certain certain uh, wavelength. The range are given. Then what is the name for that? Okay. And also you need to have understanding of behavior of atmosphere, earth surface object, how energy is radiated from sun, how energy is radiated from earth. So at each wavelength, what is the response? What is the outcome of all these uh, all these uh, phenomena? Okay. So the second part that we are going to discuss is energy interaction with Earth surface features. Okay. <clears throat> the same diagram I'm, I'm plotting over here that is given in the reference book written by Lily Sen and Kiefer. So this diagram you can find on page number 12. Okay. So Earth surface object, there is some water body over here. Certain vegetations are there. At this particular point, there is an incident energy. Okay. So there is a reflected component and further we have a transmitted component and there is some absorption. Okay. So by applying law of conservation of energy, you need to write that the incident energy, spectral value EI, that is equal to ER, this component is reflected component. It is the transmitted component and E is the absorbed component, okay? ER plus ET. So this is the total energy that uh, reaches to the earth surface. If you divide it in this equation, if you divide it by the incident energy, then it will be one is equal to the reflected energy. You need to take ratio of reflected versus incident. Then further it is transmitted process uh, again incident 
and the next you will take absorbed versus ei okay now this ratio we define in terms of uh, uh, certain parameters okay so it is reflectance just uh, you need to see the nomenclature uh, right now i am writing the reflectance with o and this reflectance is also the function of wavelength plus what will have the transmittance so let's say i'm using this symbol phi over here phi t it become transmittance and then absorptance we have so it's gamma now see over here when the wavelength changes what happens when the wavelength changes what will happen the ei changes <gasps> correct but once you take the ratio what will happen with change in incident energy okay when we take the ratio then there will not be effect but what will happen the redistribution of energy let's see once you divide it by ei means you have normalized okay. so whatever the value of ei if you take the ratio then it is normalized but what happened when you change the wavelength when the lambda changes the redistribution of energy over here in terms of reflected transmitted and absorbed that redistribution that that distribution changes okay the distribution changes means what let's say if at a particular wavelength lambda 1 these three variables you take the sum of them it should come one so let's say for lambda 1 this combination is 0.6 plus 0.2 plus 0.2 okay but at at another wavelength that is lambda 2 If that 0.7 plus 0.2 plus 0.1. What I am trying to elaborate over here, like with change in wavelength, the material property to reflect the energy changes. so the material property changes with respect to the wavelength okay how it behaves how it is absorbing the energy how it is reflecting the energy <laughs> correct and this is the reason why i have written that the spectral composition like like these 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 variables are dependent on the wavelength but over here when we have a second medium solid so in that case in that case what will happen we can say that okay this transmittance component is zero really equal to zero so now how what will have Form equation first. Now we can write it. We have only two component: the reflectance and absorptance. Okay. This, as we have discussed previously, like. Uh, the spectral band 
the the sensor which are designed in a spectral band less than 3 micrometer so if this is a 3 micrometer dividing line okay before 3 micrometer till 0.4 micrometer so in the range 0.4 to 3 micrometer that include visible and near infrared spectrum many we can we can expect we have a significant uh, significant portion of uh, atmospheric windows because if you see the atmospheric transmission process wavelength curve then 0.4 to 3 micrometer within this band atmosphere behaves as a transparent medium okay so we design many many of the imaging sensors can for them we select the spectral band in this range 0.4 to 0.7 micrometer okay and there in in these spectral band the sensing type of energy is re reflected energy because we don't have a radiated component before 3 micrometer as we discussed before as a conclusion while analyzing the radiated curve from sun and from earth okay so it means uh, i can write over here <coughs> like if let's say there is a query energy leaving the earth surface object towards sensor in wavelength less than 3 micrometer in wavelength less than 3 micrometer okay so energy leaving the earth surface objects towards sensor in wavelength less than 3 micrometer is constituted is constituted by the query is no one is uh, no one should tell me unless i ask okay first one is radiated second one is reflected third one is both 1 and 2 and fourth one is transmitted again i am repeating this query energy leaving the earth surface object towards sensor in wavelength less than 3 micrometer is constituted by the first component is radiated the second one is only reflected third one is both radiated and Uh, reflected while the fourth one is only transmitted component fine i hope it is clear to you subham kumar could you please unmute yes sir what is the correct option for this query Just see, read. First option, sir. Pardon? Sir, first option radiated. Think carefully. Think once again, and just recollect the logic we have discussed before.
ओके थैंक यू ओके सर शिवम सेम सर रिलेटेड अरे ना आ रही है ऐसा कह रहा हूं मेरे पास ओके जयश्री भगत कुमार What is your response? Agati, you are not audible. Okay, wait again. Uh, Arun Kumar Sahni. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, the second option, reflection. आलोक कुमार यस सर सर रिफ्लेक्टेड होगा आंसर हेलो ठीक है ओके यस सर कुमार सर रिफ्लेक्टेड रिफ्लेक्टेड See, uh, the reflected is the correct option because again I have it. It's not radiated because less than three micrometer Earth surface doesn't radiate. Again, I ask you to go through the energy curve, the radiated energy curve for Sun as well as Earth. and i think uh, if i recall many times i have already discussed about the significance of this 3 micrometer line okay and this is very important while you are going to design the sensors or you are trying to understand the concept specific to the interaction with our surface object okay. so less than 3 micrometer we have only the radiated component from sun and even if we see the energy leaving the earth surface what does this mean means if we select a, a smallest area on the ground okay so when the incident energy <coughs> interact okay what is a reflected what is the total energy leaving the surface means leaving the surface and going toward the sensor so this could be due to the radiated component from the earth surface or it could be due to the reflected component okay so as we know that for wavelength less than 3 micrometer you see the curve okay the radiated component radiated component from earth is equal to zero because earth starts radiating energy from 3 micrometer onward and attain the peak at 9.7 micrometer and further it starts declining okay so the correct option is reflected component Okay. Now coming back to our discussion, like this, as I told that uh, we we uh, select most of the sensors in wavelength less than three micrometer. Okay, 
and in when we have a less than 3 micrometer so there is only the reflected component okay this only reflected component reaches to the sensor so there is a significance of this part that we need to understand object wise the reflectance from earth surface object and how it varies with respect to wavelength and here is the term point that is the spectral signature of the object okay. so now we see how far the various various object this reflectance changes with respect to wavelength and it is called as spectral signature of that object okay so i will take up this spectral signature later on that you need to keep in mind like uh, the way reflectance varies with respect to wavelength is called as a spectral signature and it is distinct for main or surface objects like water vegetation soil and we need to do analysis for that and even you need to remember the spectral signatures of these objects which are present on our surface in majority so before let what will be role of this absorbed component who is going to tell me by when due to the incident energy okay this is a solid medium and we don't have a transmitted component we have a reflected and absorbed okay then tell me what is the role of what happens when uh, energy part of energy is absorbed see temperature Sir, of it the will be used in thermal sensor could you please reply one by one let me see uh, okay the first one want to want to yeah jasri sir if a surface absorbs energy the temperature gets increased due to that the again uh, transmitting of energy takes place in the form of radiation uh, who is the second one sir alok kumar uh, yeah alok please tell me sir i think it will be help in uh, uh, um, sir matlab ye thermal sensors jo hum design karenge uske wo use karega sir iske kyunki temperature badh jayega to fir wahan work hoga okay so both of you are correct what happens like when earth absorb the energy okay due to the absorption of energy as we know that energy neither created nor destroyed okay so it is responsible for rise in temperature of our surface object okay so temperature rises okay and saturates at 300 degree kelvin due to the absorption if you take the take the average of absorption from all various types of our surface features because absorption is not constant absorption varies feature wise some object absorb more while the other object absorb less reflect more that will see while analyzing the spectral signature but overall when we average out then then we we say that okay when temperature saturate at 300 degree kelvin then due to the absorption temperature rises settled at 300 degree kelvin and it is responsible for further 
radiated or transmitted component of energy from the surface okay so i'm giving you 5 minutes time kindly just recall revise the discussion we have okay then again i resume the session after 12:30 
Uh, okay, so now we we uh, discuss about type of reflection that we can expect from the earth surface. Okay, I hope I am audible. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, hello, sir. Yeah, please. Sir, can you explain the earth energy at three hundred Kelvin? I didn't get it correctly. That radiated, I think uh, I have already discussed two or three times. You can just refer the radiated energy from Earth surface object. Just refer that curve, okay? Okay, sir. So, so can uh, can we say that something like uh, in during time, uh, morning Earth uh, sun as a passive source. So uh, at the night time, uh, Earth act as a passive source also. Earth radiate is respective of day and night. Mm -hmm. So we we have a radiated component throughout the day and in night also. But in night, obviously, we don't have availability of. In night, you don't have availability to a particular location. There is a night, but in other countries there is a day. Okay. So generally, the satellite which are revolving around the Earth, they ensure that. Air location and sun location synchronize. We call them sun synchronous satellites, sun synchronous orbit. Okay, so satellite which uh, which are used for imaging the Earth surface, they revolve in sun synchronous orbit. Okay, where the the, the satellite always looks to the place where there is a midday. Uh, okay. Again, coming back to the reflection, so we have a two different types of reflection: specular and diffuse. Okay. Specular reflection and diffuse. So, when we have a ideal specular reflection reflector. When the surface at which energy incident, okay, if that is ideal specular reflector like mirror, ideal specular reflector. So in that case, Snell's law satisfy an angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. So in a specific direction, the total energy that is uh, that is incident on the surface, okay, as an incidence energy. Then in a specific direction, by satisfying the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection, the energy is reflected back. And this is called as specular pure specular reflection, and it uh, that we get from. Ideal specular reflector, okay. but when we have a near perfect specular reflector, case of near perfect specular reflector, there is incident energy. But reflected in one direction, we have a dominant component, but we also have other component. Okay, so this is near perfect specular reflector. Now, when we have a near perfect diffuse reflector, near perfect. Diffuse reflector. Okay. So in this case, incident energy direction, then we have a component reflected back. While we have a rest of the component, they are to diffuse. Yeah, they are partially diffuse in other directions. And when we have a ideal diffuse reflector. We also call them the Lambertian surface. In case of 
ideal fuse reflector. This is also called as Lambertian surface. The total incident energy is equally reflected in all directions. This is TDB. So, hemisphere, 180 degree solid angle. Okay. And generally, for the remote sensing, we prefer the diffuse reflection. Now, I suggest you to kindly look into this. Why we select diffuse reflection for the remote sensing? Why not spectacular? Okay, go through this analysis, and even we have uh, 15 minutes left. So during this time, I suggest you to kindly, based on our discussion which we have, like uh, source that is sun, target and sensor geometry. Considering that part and other fundamentals which have been discussed, try to explore why diffuse reflection is needed, why we, we, we do not consider the ideal, this our specular reflection for the remote sensing.
Okay, so I hope uh, uh, you have gone through the analysis how we can uh, like why we select diffuse reflection. Okay, for the remote sensing. So uh, we'll discuss it again uh, while our next lecture. So I stop my discussion over here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.